it's Sylvia Michetti. This is Luminosity TV. There's one thing that almost all of us has experienced. It's that moment when we have family members or friends coming over to the home and we start cleaning and dusting the whole place very quickly, wanting to keep everywhere looking spotless and in tip-top condition, just so that we can make a good impression. I know I have, even recently. <laughs> have you ever had cleaners come in to clean your home and you do a mini clean before they get there? <laughs> That's me. I'm always worried they're going to say, oh, what's, what's it with this lady? Does she not tidy up at all? So I tidy up a little and leave the rest for them to do. It turns out that none of us wants to be seen as dirty and unclean. We always want to make a good impression with our guests. So we invest time in making our environment look so pleasant, so warm and inviting. We adorn our space with bright lights and chandeliers, with flowers and scented candles, everything to impress our guests. Some of us even have our favorite corner in the home, our favorite chair, where no one's allowed to sit. It's our special spot so that after a long day, we can feel relaxed sitting in it. But wait a minute, of what use is it if the external home and space is clean and pristine, and yet the internal is full of dust, full of dirt and full of dross? Inside of us all is our inner home, the altar of our spirit, a home that connects us to our origin, to our true self. We have our chandelier in there that needs to keep burning bright. There can't be a power cut. We have our scented candles that must keep burning and smelling of sweet fragrance. And of course, we have our beautiful flowers that needs water and sunlight and rich soil. So whilst we're trying to impress with our furniture and all our home designs, let us spare a moment to ask ourselves, what is the condition of this inner home which I'm carrying around? This inner home that goes everywhere with me, whether I'm at home, at work or at play, it's there with me. Whether I'm sad or happy or indifferent, whether I'm 15, 25 or 55, it's always there. So that is the real me that needs the utmost clean. I cannot hire a maid, nor can I have professional cleaners bring in all the equipment and clean it for me, no. This cleaning has to be done by the true owner, you. So how clean you are on the inside is down to you. And the same pride we take in all our material stuff is the same passion we should have for our spiritual hygiene. Don't go near my car, I've just washed it. Don't touch that, it, it can break, it cost a fortune. Please don't drink anything sitting on that chair, it can get stained and it's very expensive. What about your soul? Can it get stained and soiled? Is it delicate? Can it break? Is it a rare gem? Is it expensive? Does it cost a fortune? Is it worthy to be polished and kept pristine? Until these questions arise within us and we realize that our inner life is essentially what we have, especially when we know that one day we're going to leave this body behind and all the houses and cars and furniture that we've been cleaning and polishing will all get left behind. What is left is our spirit and how clean we have kept it. So every day now I'm asking myself, what can I do to keep my spirit clean? Does it need a little dusting or does it need a complete overhaul? If I'm going to brush my teeth twice a day, what is my spirit going to need in return? If my body is going to need food and drink, what can I feed my spirit to keep it happy and alive? How are you keeping your spirit clean? What are you doing that's helping you to brush and dust and wipe your inner home clean? It's not for nothing that we say cleanliness is next to godliness. What does that phrase mean to you? I've realized that we cannot be truly happy just by cleaning the external if the soul and the spirit suffers inside. And one of the best ways for me personally that I'm learning is trying to keep my thoughts pure and clean. And when I find myself drifting off and thinking of something impure and unclean, I quickly snap back knowing that whatever I sow, that's what I'm going to reap. Of course, we're not perfect human beings. And from time to time, all of our worries and all of our fears 
manifest in our reality. So we have to be careful where we direct our thoughts and our words and our actions because the universe is ever watchful and always listening. Recently, I went to the nail salon to get my nails done. And as I was sitting there waiting to be called, I was thinking to myself, I don't want that guy. I don't want that guy. I'll rather have one of the ladies do my nails. I don't want that guy. Immediately, I had that thought. The guy walks up to me and says, hello, madame, what would you like to get done today? I was like, oh, dear. I said, I don't want that guy. But the universe does not know what you don't want. It just knows where you've directed your thoughts. So the moment I said, I don't want that guy, I connected myself to him in thought. When instead, I should have connected myself to one of the ladies and say, I can't wait for you to finish and do my nails. I know this is a mundane example, but this is how it works. We must focus our thoughts on what is good and pure. And this is what will then reflect on our environment. We feed our bodies three times a day with food and drink, and yet, some of us find it so hard to look up and acknowledge our Creator once. We wake up, dress up and feel alive, but we can't spare a moment to give gratitude to the source of all life. We don't appreciate any dirty environment, but what environment does our spirit have to live and work in when it doesn't even recognize where it has come from? We have covered with dust and dirt the knowledge of our Creator, which lives in each and every one of us. Because we're either in pain or suffering or in our comfort and luxury or just enjoying our life, we forget what truly lives within us. So the question is, is your chandelier shining bright or has the power gone out? Have your flowers withered away and now on barren soil? And the scented candles on the altar of your spirit, is the aroma choking or is it soothing for you and all of those around you? All of this is down to each of us. Good thoughts, gratitude, prayer, seeking a knowledge of your life and your existence and why you're here. Trying to find your purpose, not just your paycheck. Enjoying the good things that the world has got to offer, but not allowing yourself to be defined by it knowing that there's more to this life than just your well-fed body and your luxury home, giving joy to others, showing love, and being of service to your fellow human beings. These are some of the ways that we can keep our spirit clean and well-fed. And who doesn't want that? I know I do. <laughs> Until next time, think of the inside, and the outside will be taken care of. Bye for now.